tardes. Buenas tardes, Mexico. That's all the, that's all the Spanish I know. So uh, Seth Godin said something very important, right? He said that it's really important to be weird and to not be normal. And I've been watching this conference, and it's, uh, I love the theme of it, Mex I Can. And I'd like you, if you would do, if you would, to repeat after me, Mex I Can. Mex I? Mex I? Mex I? Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to talk about what that means and what we do with that. What's happening today is we are going and accelerating the world very dramatically. This is the very first circuit board that had 30, 200 chips on it and a few uh, bandwidth, very low bandwidth. And now we have teraflops of computing on the same physical space. One of our alumni, Santiago Bilinkis, did a calculation, and he worked out that if the top speed of a car had increased at the same 40% desktop uh, computing increases we've seen, over the last 30, 40 years, a car today would go faster than the speed of light. So give you some sense of the power that you have in your pocket. And what's happening is we're digitizing the world, right? Note that our relationships today are all digital, not analog. Our communications are all digital, not analog. Uh, for those of us who have smartphones, our memories are not in our heads. They're in our smartphones now. And we're essentially transforming into digital beings. And something very dramatic happens when you change from a material world to a digital world. You all, some of you are old enough to remember film photography, right? When you take a photograph with film, it costs about a dollar to process, it takes some time. Uh, it, uh, you can only carry so much film around, you frame everyone carefully. When you move to digital photography, the marginal cost of an extra photograph drops to zero. Essentially, you can take a billion more photographs, and we do, and now use a very different mechanism to manage it. And once you have something in a digital world, you can move it around, you can apply machine learning, correlation, uh, simulation, AI, modeling, and so on, and that drives the pace of change even further. And this is essentially what we're seeing. At Singularity University, we study these fast-moving technologies, and we're seeing this shift from the material to the digital world happen not just in computing, but across all of these different areas. And we've never seen this before in history. And it's having some pretty dramatic impacts in the world and causing a huge acceleration in what's happening in the world. This is a short video to give you a sense of how we think like about things. Complete new things happening. This is a, a period where the amount of change is so Im immensely rapid that things happen today that you wouldn't imagine even 10 years ago or 20 years ago. If you're running a big company today and you're not aware of what technologies may come along and orthogonally impact you, you're simply not doing your job. This last hundred years, the massive improvements we've seen have been the influence of technology. And let me tell you, it's not slowing down. It's only accelerating. And what you can expect to see is literally continued growth in health and wealth for every human on this planet. We now have the programming language of life available with the push of a button. And I like to say any of you can be a genetic engineer, even if you've never done it before, because all you need to do is type. So we have now taken biology and turned it into a digital environment. And that same shift between film photography and digital photography is now happening to life itself. Right? And this is fundamentally the big upward pressure that's going on. And we need these technologies. This is the head of the World Health Organization saying that we have not had a new antibiotic for 20, 30 years, and we're going to start having deaths from this increase because we haven't discovered new ones. And we have superbugs that are now resistant to antibiotics. This is a small company out of San Diego that continued the work of Dr. William Pollack, who discovered the cure to RH disease, and 65 million babies have been saved as a result. They're taking that same treatment vector and applying it to superbugs, allergies, the common cold, and even cancer, and they have working product now. There are 10 people in a small lab in San Diego. Right? Now, what you're seeing now with Jack and Draco with some of the earlier presentations is the democratization of all of these technologies has yield, gotten to the point where any single individual or a small team can do this. And this is driving the world very, very powerfully forward. Um, I, the, the thing I love about Jack's bio is it says he's a scientist, inventor, cancer researcher, born 1997. It's like really embarrassing. 
Okay, so this is all great. It's all really sexy. We love hearing about these things. They're dangerous ideas and so on, but we have a problem, okay? This whole concept of mechs I can is fantastic. The problem is we can't. The actually, what we, where we are today is mechs I can't, and I don't mean just Mexico. I mean the entire world. We have this enormous upward pressure from technology, but we are not set up for this. All of the systems that we use to run the world today, our politics, our civics, our legal systems, healthcare, education, intellectual property, are all designed for a world 200, 300, 400, 500 years ago, not for the world of today. Definitely not for where the world is going. And this is the struggle that we have. Because all these technologies are great, we just get stuck with the human factor which it has a resistance to this kind of change. I'm going to play you a short video. Many of you are familiar with the Google car. This is what it's like to ride in the Google car, right? There's a little oh swearing in this. I apologize, so right. cover your ears if you are sensitive to that. Holy shit. Holy shit. There's no fucking hands on that wheel. Sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> what? It's driving itself. <laughs> Can I have a bit more volume? All right, you, you hear that scream, okay? That scream is the visceral, primal scream of humanity meeting advanced technology, okay? And the first time you get into that car and it takes off at high speed and it's going around that obstacle course faster than you can drive it, you freak out. There's nobody at the wheel, okay? After about 10 minutes, it's like getting into an elevator. You press the button, it takes you where you want to go. But that scream is the first scream. What we're seeing today around the world is humanity screaming as we hit this information age. This is the Prime Minister of Turkey, a smart, thoughtful, intelligent, experienced guy. This is his scream, right? Totally freaking out. Uh, San Paolo, Mexico City, the teachers are all freaking out, as I understand right now. In the US, we're not much better. We're, we're pepper spraying our civics. We're overreacting badly. We can't manage this information world. The Fourth Amendment, the right to privacy in, in the US Constitution is essentially gone. We, the, a fundamental pillar of Amer American society, I'm Canadian, so I don't have an expectation of privacy anyway, but if you're American, this is a pretty big part of life, and it's disappeared with no public conversation about it. Right? The patent system, fundamentally broken. High-tech companies are now spending more on patent litigation than on R&D. And so how do we go from this? Because one thing's not changing, where do we go with this? Because we had 1.2 billion people online a few years ago. We're going to go to 5 billion by the end of the decade. We're going to have 5 billion people like Jack doing radically interesting things. We have to overcome the cultural people factor issues that we have. How do we shift from mechs I can to mechs I will, right? And to do that, you have to accept the concept of experimentation and you have to accept the concept of failure. I travel around the world talking to people all over the world, and the problem that I see in most places is that people don't want to accept failure. To succeed, or if you want to make a big change, you have to take a big risk. You simply no way around it. And if you want to take a big risk, you have to take that risk of failure. And here in Mexico, people don't like to fail, and therefore people don't like to try things. Right? In Silicon Valley, the reason that Silicon Valley is successful is people embrace failure. We call it experience. Skype, 40 investment pitches before they got funded. Cisco, 76. Pandora, over 300. Larry and Sergey have heard, did over 359 investor pitches where they were told no 359 times before somebody funded them. What if they'd have stopped at 200? Right? And how many other great ideas have stopped early because we didn't want to fail? Dan Barry, uh, who's an astronaut, one of our faculty, applied for astronaut school 14 years in a row before he was finally told yes. That's what it takes. It takes repeated failures. Now, when a child is growing up and you teach them how to play the piano, the first time they play the piano, they're not very good. We don't tell them, don't ever play the piano again. We say, try again, keep trying, keep trying. And yet we've somehow achieved it a culture around the world where failure is not tolerated. So I want to present a dangerous idea. And I have not told Andres that I'm doing this. I want to announce, I want to shift from this conversation, and I'd like to announce a contest. And I'd like to create a thing of mechs I will. Okay? And what does that look like? I'd like to have a contest. 
I want you to think about the people that you know who are really great, who have tried something and experimented and failed. And we all know them. It could be you, it could be a family friend, it could be your spouse, it could be a cousin, it could be your colleague, your boss, your employees. If they've tried something and failed, send a tweet. I've created the account CDIMXIWill, the hashtag is MExperiment, and what you do is you say, I nominate such and such for this project, and CC this Twitter account. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a contest. We're going to reward people that attempted and experimented and failed. Because only by rewarding failure and rewarding the attempts will you shift the cultural conversation where it becomes acceptable. Because shift into this new world where we can explore and allow a million Jack and Drakas and all of the other kids that are doing incredible things, we have to teach them to experiment. We have to teach them that failure is not bad. So I'd like to invite you, and if you're not tweeting, find somebody that is, it's not that hard, to send a note to this. I've already talked to the head of Pepsi here, they will sponsor it. And Ricardo, can I rely on you to put the winner on TV? Okay, done. Andres, can we put that person on there? Okay, I'd like you to repeat after me. Mexi will. Mexi will. Mexi. Mexi will. Thank you very much. Bravo. Thank you.